Uh, so basically, uh, we're very early in our development of our game right now. So one of the things that we learned from our previous uh, development cycles with the uh, Unreal Engine uh, 2.5 and whatnot is that the key is really to move a lot of the work off of the programmers, especially since we're such a small team. We have very few programmers, and we there's just too much to do at any given time. So the more um, kind of creative work we can push off to people like Will to tweak the sounds and stuff without our intervention, the better, because that means we can get a lot more done, we can fix more bugs, the game ends up better as a whole. With, uh, for example, with uh, America's Army 2.7, we added the uh, Humvee in there to drive around, and Will created some great uh, Humvee engine sounds, uh, got those up. But anytime he wanted to change the pitch of the sound or anything like that dynamically in the game, he would have to get one of us, we would have to go into the code, change the uh, pitch, uh, functions and what have you, and then recompile it, send it back to Will so he can play with it a little bit, and if he wants to tweak it again, it comes back. It ends up taking my time, it ends up taking Will's time, and as much as I do love to work with Will, um, I think we would have really rather have seen less with each other during that development cycle. So, uh, uh, our, one of our main goals with uh, the next generation stuff that we're doing right now is to try to give, at an early stage of the game, people like Will and the artists as many tools as possible to get their job done so they can start messing with the engine, you know, twiddling with the functions and whatnot, and kind of develop their skill set and be able to modify all this stuff without needing the programmers to do it for them. And uh, as uh, Dan Vogel showed earlier, the uh, Unreal Engine really lends itself, especially with the sounds where you can literally just import sounds, drag boxes, change parameters. It's a very intuitive uh, system to get done what you need to get done. So in that spirit, um, for the 3.0 development cycle, we decided one of the things we wanted to do is since we had this wealth of assets from America's Army 2X, that we would bring those in, use them as kind of placeholder functional images so we can start messing around with EAX, get some raw sounds in there, and really start to uh, actually put these things in game, even though it's kind of placeholder graphics, it's not a bad degree of fidelity uh, to just work with, and it's, it's not ugly on the eyes, which is very nice. So, what we have here right now is, if you guys play America's Army, this is uh, actually Steam War, it's an urban combat map from uh, version 2.7 that uh, Clayton Montgomery, aka DJ Monkey Boy, was kind enough to uh, import for us, so you can see it's just kind of a rubble. It doesn't have any of the bells or whistles or special effects. This is just kind of the raw geometry and the raw textures. But uh, we found, found it to be a very nice, uh, especially sound development environment, because it's kind of interesting. It's got a lot of big buildings and alleyways and things for sounds to bounce off of, so we really wanted to use it kind of as a test bed to, you know, develop our EAX uh, repertoire so we could develop these dynamic environments based off of the single uh, sound that we cut. So uh, I think uh, Will wanted to talk for a second about the uh, ambient sounds he put in here because he didn't want it to sound like just a dry, flat, silent world. He wanted to add a little bit of uh, oh, background noise. So I'll let him address that. Basically, I just wanted to add, uh, just to kind of play off of what we've seen uh, from the demonstration with Dan. Um, what I did was I placed ambient sound actors. Um, if, say, you're looking over bird's eye view of the map and it's, uh, it's in a square, I placed ambient sound actors at each corner and then kind of in a diamond formation all the way around. And uh, let's see, it's randomizing between two sound cues and those are randomizing, randomizing between at least 10 sounds a piece. Uh, it is attenuated, looped, delayed, modulated, and then randomized into the cues. So that just kind of, I wanted to just mention that because it lends itself to how versatile the signal flow can be in, in the audio portion of you. And we'll switch back over here. Cool. So, um, that being said, this is our test bed, and uh, Will's already started going in uh, and creating these dynamic sound environments so that that one M4 sound or the you know, four that he chooses to be random uh, can sound more dynamic based on the environment you're in because you just don't want that little impulse sound and you don't want a gunshot to sound like you just fired it out in uh, you know, the fields of Alabama where you have you know, big mountainous reverbs and whatnot because that's not what it sounds like when you fire an M4 in a confined space, as I'm sure Doug can attest to. <laughs> and uh, we can actually attest to after uh, following the SF guys around for a while. You, you learn really quickly what the real gunfire actually sounds like. So, um, for the test map, we actually have the player start right down here in this corner. Um, we thought it was kind of interesting with the, uh, the rubble and whatnot. But um, as Dan was talking about, Unreal now uses volumes for reverberation because we don't tend to have the zones as much anymore. So what we did was for each of these buildings that uh, have sort of similar geometry as far as sound is concerned, similar size of rooms, similar acoustics, we um, put in a bunch of these volumes 
which actually define uh, reverb settings that define the sound environment. They control how the reverb sounds. There's a bunch of presets that you can actually go in and do. So if you look, the building on the left has one big volume around it because it's multiple floors of roughly the same size, the same acoustics. And this building on the right actually is a, uh, has a stairwell that you can see right here. And then the actual building's uh, dynamic audio environment is right behind that. So uh, basically when the player moves through the map, every time they cross into a zone, it loads up a new EA, uh, EFX reverb setting and it, the sound will change based on where you're at in the map. And uh, what's really nice is that uh, Will can come in when he has the map, even if it's just in a rushed out geometry stage, as long as he knows kind of what the environment is looking like, he can go in there and start laying down these volumes. And uh, out of the box, Unreal actually comes with uh, a bunch of preset reverberation types. So you can see there's a default, um, alleyways, forest, city, mountains, and each one have kind of their own characteristic reverberations and they sound a lot different and kind of help to immerse any sound that plays through the reverb volume uh, and make it sound more like you're actually there. So um, you can just go through straight out of the box with Unreal, pop in these reverb uh, zones and use one of these presets. What we decided we wanted to do in addition to that is also to find a bunch of custom settings and expose each and every one of these parameters that control what the reverb actually sounds like to Will so we'd have full control over what he wanted to, the reverbs to sound like so we can really tune in uh, how each environment sounds that the player goes into. So you can see we have things like the air absorption gain, the uh, density, the diffusion constants of the air, the gain, the high frequency gain, the low frequency gain, late delay, um, the reference frequencies. so you can actually change the way that the uh, filter works. And so he just has absolute fine tooth control. I mean, I can't even hear the difference on most of these things because he found the most tone deaf programmer to be his audio <laughs> engineer. But uh, he knows what sounds good and I don't, so I, I trust his opinion. He's, he's the professional. So um, without further ado, we want to uh, launch the single player game. This is actually the first time we've ever shown anybody anything having to do with AA3, so we're a little bit nervous, so bear with us if anything catas catastrophic happens. Okay, so here we are in the snake plane right now, and we've uh, given ourselves an M4 rifle, which is what we recorded the sounds on. And uh, Bill just fired a few times, and you can actually hear the reverb, and there is a bit of natural reverb as you can hear my voice in this room, so it'll sound a little bit uh, strange, but you'll get the idea. You can see how it kind of goes back in the city. Then as we walk up here, I'm going to go into this uh, crumbled building on the right, and you'll hear how the sound changes. Get up in here. You hear how there's a longer, a little bit different character to the sound. Finally, we'll go in the stairwell here. But you can see how you can change the uh, environment on the fly. And then uh, one thing we added to uh, help Will really tune these things down is a uh, reverberation editor. Oops, if I could type. That actually lets him go in here and tweak all these settings on the fly. So if he's in the game and he's like, you know, I don't really like how this sounds, he can go in here, pull up this reverberation editor, and move these sliders on the fly to adjust how everything uh, works out. So we'll do something, we'll add a, we'll delay the uh, reverberation effect, which is really obvious and easy to hear in this room, even though there's so much natural reverb. So we'll just up the reflections delay, apply the reverb, close. And you can hear how it's fire, weight, the reverb comes up. And so that's an example how we wanted to give uh, Will the tools that, you know, if he wanted to go in here and tweak these things, he doesn't need to come to a programmer, he doesn't need to do anything, he can just bring up his little reverberation editor, even if he's in the middle of a game, and tweak the sounds on the fly until he's happy with how it sounds. So that's uh, our basic reverb editor. If you can start up the server, we'll uh, show you a few more little tricks that we uh, put in here to kind of make this a more real sound environment than uh, we had in the previous game.